Well, there's been a lot of political discussion. There's been a lot of conversations about what the consequences of the calling of the election in Spain will be. Um, we've had a lot of discussion with our Spanish counterparts and with our commission counterparts, and we are all working together to produce the best possible result for people in the whole of the region of Gibraltar and around Gibraltar, as you can imagine. Can you share any aspect of those discussions with us? I mean, you said on Tuesday on Gibraltar today that it's very unlikely there's going to be a treaty. Obviously, Spain has dissolved its parliament. Any update on that situation at all? Well, look, I can tell you that the Prime Minister and the President of Spain have met today in the margins of the a European political community in Moldova. That engagement has been very positive. It's been uh, forward looking. It's again been about trying to achieve the treaty that has been elusive until now for good reason um, and continuing the positive work to deliver against the objectives that we've set, our against now, set ourselves up against now for uh, some years and which we are continuing to pursue despite the fact that an election is being called in Spain and that an election will be due in Gibraltar before the end of the year. Is it your intention to speak to the Prime Minister yourself? Yes, of course, it, it's my intention to continue in contact with uh, the Foreign Secretary, with the Prime Minister and with senior civil servants in the United Kingdom, in Brussels and uh, in Madrid, so that we can continue this process and take it to the destination we've all sought to take it. I mean, I'm, I'm very pleased to be able to tell people that I think there, there should be a, a calm approach to this. I know that there was a lot of tension in Gibraltar during the course of the past few days as a result of the calling of the general election. I know that has also been the position in the campo around Gibraltar where there's been a lot of concern. But, but I think that we can confidently say that this is a process that continues to be ongoing and that is going to continue to seek to deliver the objectives that we have been hoping to be able to deliver against in the past uh, in the past years and months. Well, we obviously don't know what's going to happen after the 23rd of July. Have we had any assurances as to the status quo at the frontier, for example? Well, Rose, look, I don't think there's any reason to think that, that there is going to be any material change at the frontier. Remember that the regime at the frontier is designed to give an element of continuity to the, the period post our withdrawal from the European Union, but before the completion of a treaty. Uh, we are continuing in the process with both the European Union and our Spanish counterparts of trying to deliver that treaty. So therefore, I don't think there'll be any appreciable change at the frontier. We haven't been given any notice of that by the Commission or by our Spanish counterparts. So I think people can have the confidence that we will continue to have as fluid a frontier as we have had today, of course, subject to the fact that there are uh, Schengen border code obligations which are extant on Spain and which the Commission is responsible for also. Uh, but despite that being uh, applied in a relatively flexible way, which delivers the fluidity that the Campo de Gibraltar needs and Gibraltar needs. Chief Minister, I appreciate the need to stay calm and positive, but the fact is there could be a change of government in the summer. It could be a right-wing, um, less sympathetic government in place. We don't know what's going to happen with the treaty. Are you going to be seeking some assurances from the UK government that they will support Gibraltar financially uh, should a uh, no deal materialise? It's something that Sir Bob Neill has asked recently in Parliament. I know that uh, James, James Cleverly was also asked. He gave a very sort of sketchy reply on that, whether the UK was going to support Gibraltar. Would you expect the UK to support Gibraltar financially in the case of a no deal, which would potentially harm our economy? Well, you've asked and answered your own question there, um, Roz, to an extent. But, but let me take you through the various stages of what you've said. First of all, um, if there is a Partido Popular government, please don't forget that we started the process of negotiation with a Partido Popular government. Senor Dastis was the foreign minister and uh, Mariano Rajoy when we started the negotiation of the withdrawal agreement, which was a positive outcome for Gibraltar because we had the benefit of the, uh, of the period after departure, um, so just like the United Kingdom. Second, remember that uh, I have already sought assurances from the UK government in the context of the preparing for a no negotiated outcome, that there would be financial support for Gibraltar, which would be essential, at least for a period. 
And let's be very clear, Gibraltar finds itself in the situation in which it finds itself today, not because its government has failed to agree a treaty to date, because we wouldn't surrender on the fundamentals, we wouldn't concede on any of the issues which are uh, sacrosanct to us as a socialist uh, Labour Party uh, members and Liberal Party members. Uh, we are finding ourselves in this situation because the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union because a Conservative government called a referendum for that purpose. Now, that is the democratic will of the British people, including the people of Gibraltar, being called into put into play. Um, but of course, there will be negative consequences for Gibraltar, which can only be ameliorated to an extent, at least in the short term, by financial support from the United Kingdom, in the same way as the United Kingdom has financially supported other parts of the United Kingdom, which have had difficulties arising as a result of the United Kingdom's departure to leave the European Union. So I've sought those assurances before. I'm surprised that you say that the assurances that we've received at the dispatch box from James cleverly and others um, has been uh, somewhat nebulous. In fact, I think the, the position has been very clear. The position expressed to me has been very clear. You know, we saw a red bus going around the United Kingdom saying that leaving the European Union would save the UK £350 million a week. And the people who made those arguments are still the people in government in the United Kingdom now. So I'm sure they can afford at least a week of the savings from after leaving the European Union to support Gibraltar for the, for the years that uh, might be very difficult if we were to have a no negotiated outcome, which I still believe is unlikely to happen because I still believe we will have a negotiated outcome and it will be a treaty that will be safe and secure and positive for Gibraltar, although we now have this issue of a general election in Spain um, in, on, in the way. OK, um, Mr. Picardo, any news on what other meetings you've got that you might want to share with us before you're back in Gibraltar? Anything of interest? Well, I think at the, at the moment, of course, you know, it's important that I confirm to people that this process is not dead, that the process is alive, that it's ongoing. It's important that people know that we are very optimistic still that we will be able to achieve the outcome that we sought, even if there were to be a change of government in Spain. And the you know, crystal ball gazing, if we were to go down the route of, of trying to guess what the government is going to be like in Spain, but it should not just be seen as very likely to be of one political complexion or the other. There's a lot of issues alive in the Spanish political system between now and the result of the general election on the on the 23rd of July, uh, late in the evening. We know that Spain counts very quickly. We'll have a result uh, by that night. We might have a result, but we might not know who's going to form government because it could be uh, that tight. But uh, the meetings I've had have all been designed to deal with the situation in which we find ourselves. I'm very confident that we'll be able to navigate this period effectively. I'm confident we'll be able to continue working very closely with our colleagues um, across Whitehall, but in particular with our colleagues in the Foreign and Commonwealth uh, Office. I'm very confident that there's a lot of goodwill in Brussels to try and continue to see through this process, which has seen a lot of investment of time by senior officials in the Commission who have given this a lot of their effort. And I'm very confident that colleagues in Spain at an official level will continue the engagement that there's been until now in trying to find a route to a treaty, trying to find a solution to the issues that Brexit raises, not just for Gibraltar, which is my uh, responsibility to deal with, but also for the people of the company, that that is the responsibility of our colleagues in the Ministerio de Asuntos Exteriores to deal with. So, you know, let's keep going. Let's keep calm. Let's hold a nerve. And as I said in the, in the immediate aftermath of the uh, announcement by Pedro Sanchez, if anybody in Gibraltar feels that they can't hold their nerve through this process, they shouldn't worry. I'll hold it for them.